And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. All right, it's time to talk about the biggest and best and latest and best expansion for Dominion, Dominion Prosperity. This is a... Uh, shut the door! Anyway, this is the in a, a fantastic, the best expansion out there. It really changes the game. And this isn't just hyperbole, it's not because it's new, but I've played many games of Dominion. It may be the most played game in my collection, and this really brings lots of different things to the table. There's lots of additions to it, uh, but I think it can be summed up with just more money. And there's just so much more in this blah, 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 blah. Let's look at the cards. All right, here we go. Let's start talking about these cards. Don't want to waste too much time on them. But Watchtower is a new card that's in the game. This is a new reaction card, which... Uh, basically, when you get a card, it lets you trash it if you want. So it's a good stop against curses, and it lets you draw until you have six cards in your hand, which is very helpful with cards that put your hand down to three, like Militia from the basic set. We also have, this is one of my favorite cards in the, in the game, the Mint. You can show a treasure card from your hand, and you get a copy of it. Wonderful. A way to get really cool treasures, get duplicates of them. The disadvantage of buying the Mint is that when you buy it, all the treasures you use to buy it are trash from play. However, that can also be neat because it's a way to get rid of some coppers out of your deck. Love this card. The Grand Market, it's a new market, very similar to the market except it has plus two gold, cost six, and when you, the only problem is when you buy it, you can only buy it if you don't have any coppers in play. Still, if you have a chance to get some of these, really powerful addition to the deck. As the Cities and the Counting House, which lets you pull copper, the Vault, the Peddler, you'll notice that she has a cost of eight down here, but that's reduced by two for each action card you have in play. So if you think about it, uh, it, it usually will go down greatly in cost. Uh, the trade route. Now this is something different. The game came with some more of these tokens, if you might recognize these from Seaside, and one of each of those tokens is placed on every victory point pile you have in play at the beginning of the game. Whenever one of those victory point piles has a card bought from that pile, then one of those tokens is taken off, and it's placed on a trade mat that everyone that is in the middle of the table it's included with the game and then this card gets more and more powerful adds one gold for each token on that trade mat really nice it's kind of like a kinder gentler pirate ship then we got the bishop now this is another new thing that adds tokens there are several victory point tokens that are included in the game really nice quality little metal tokens here but the bishop and the Monument and another card uh, will allow these added to the game. What's neat about these are when you play these cards, you're getting these victory point tokens. They're victory points at the end of the game, but they don't go in your deck. They don't mess up your deck. And I've seen very valid strategies where players have used the Bishop and Monument to get as many of these tokens as they can. Doesn't hurt your deck and end the game quickly. Then we got some more attack cards, the Rabble, the Goons, which is another way to get those victory point tokens, the Monty Back. And the Worker's Village, which is yet another, you know, combo type card. But now we start getting into the fun of the deck. Look at this. Treasure, 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 treasure. There's so many different treasures that are included in this expansion. And some of them are really nifty treasures. Let's take a look at some of my favorites. We have the Horde. This one's nice. It's worth two. But... So, and it costs the same as a gold, so why would I buy a card that's worth two instead of three? But when you buy a victory point card with this, you gain a gold. Near the end of the game, or even in the middle of the game, this is fantastic. As you're buying victory point cards, you're also adding more money to your deck. Very much enjoy it. The bank, which uh, is one coin for every other treasure card you play. Since you usually play three or four treasures, that can be pretty powerful. And... This one makes action cards worth uh, fewer points to, to buy. This lets you put the card on top of your deck. Then there's the Contraband, one that's really fun to play because it's three. It's cheaper than a gold, really, and gives you an extra buy. The problem is when you use it, the player next to you picks a card that you cannot buy. Now, you play it early in your turn so that they have to choose before they see how much money you have. 
but you're sitting there hoping they don't pick the card that you want to buy. Of course, you cannot buy contrabands. You don't have to worry about this, but it's still a nifty addition. Now, you might have noticed earlier that the one card costs seven. And look, King's Court, which is awesome because it lets you play another action card three times, and Forge and Expand are all cost of seven. So finally, we have, you know, people always get really angry when they get seven uh, coins in their hand because they can't buy anything. But now you can. And you say, hooray, that solved one of the problems of Dominion. Well, brethren and sistren, this is where it gets exciting. The reason for that is because there are two new cards included in the game. There is the Platinum, a new card that's included in Games of Prosperity. There's some kind of wonky way to determine if you use Platinum cards or not in the rules. Here's the Vassal Method. Just always use them. So much fun to play with. They cost nine, but they're giving you five gold. Why would you need that much money? Because, ladies and gentlemen, the Colony, which costs 11, but's worth 10 victory points. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry, but I could chortle for a long time about that one. This changes everything. The game is over when either the colonies or the provinces are gone. But now with this big money and big points in the game, the game can last longer. Not too much longer, but it can. But wow, being able to buy this really just changes everything. Fantastic fun. Maybe I'm a bit too gleeful at this expansion. I mean, I like expansions for Dominions. Adding 25 plus cards, different cards to the game, adds more variety. Fantastic. But the Colonies and the Platinum make it for me. Even if I just had those two, it would just be fun. I know there's people who say you, don't, you shouldn't use them in every game. Well, maybe. But I've played enough games of Dominion that these bring such a breath of fresh air. It, it just seems like there's so much more. If I have $9 in my hand, do I buy that Platinum or do I buy a Province? You know, I can use the points, but man, that Platinum gives you such power. And when you combine that Platinum with the Mint or even the, the Mine from the first set where you're upgrading Golds now to Platinum, there's some really neat stuff that can be done, and it just brings a giggle. I have yet to see anybody play this who did not declare it either tie for their favorite expansion or their favorite expansion. It's that good. So if you like Dominion, stop watching this video. Press stop on the player now. Go buy it. What are you waiting for? Get it! Thanks for joining us today. For more written, audio, and video reviews, as well as the number one board game podcast, check out the website at www.thedicetower.com. Until then, this is Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower.